when the pack broke up and runners were trying to chase down the pack, I could tell that they were trying to overstride to help uh, make up. And we're back, everyone. We're back. Back on track. I hope we're doing well. Going right into the studio today. Oh, man. I don't know about you, but after a long run like I did today, sometimes, like, when it starts getting serious in training, it just, like, my stomach, it just needs some time to just simmer down now. Simmer down now. So right now, whew, we're going to make it through, but I just don't feel great. So anyway, uh, hope you're doing well. Here we go. Onward and upward, talking about running form today. Uh, but first, today's run, 23 miles, 640 a mile. Oh, it feels good. It feels real good. And I posted this on Strava for the title of the run. I said, fitness is back. Officially took eight weeks. And I mean that um, today's run, I finally felt like I was myself again. After taking two to three weeks off because of the runner's knee, Plus, taking some time, some downtime around Christmas, uh, my fitness was just down, and that's to be expected, and that is normal, and I actually like that in my annual training cycles to take downtime. But it's also nice when you start to return to your fitness, and I felt it today. Like 23 miles, that's the uh, amount of volume I wanted to hit, and around I want basically at this point in the marathon training block, I want to begin to uh, touch base with the wall all right and whatever that wall is in the marathon for a lot of people it hits at 20 miles 18 miles 21 miles for me i want to make sure that basically at mile 23 i still feel in control of a lot of things my breathing and my running form so in this build up for the hamburg marathon um i'm going to focus on my long runs on getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, meaning pressing through that wall. And one last point before we dive in is that I did get an email maybe a couple weeks ago, uh, somebody who's feeling frustrated and they're a, brand, the base, they're a brand new runner, brand new. They just started running for the first time in their life and they're feeling frustrated after I think it was three or four months of running. They don't feel like their aerobic uh, capacity or their, yeah, their aerobic development is coming along well. And I just, you know what I emailed back. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a two, three, four year proposition. If you've never run in your life, your, your patience has to be at the front of your brain all the time because it takes years, not months, to develop that aerobic capacity to the point where after me running for 20 years, it still took me eight weeks in this training block of, of being patient, that slow build up, okay, you've seen the graph go up and up and up in my volume every week, and it's taken eight weeks after 20 years of being a runner to where the point I can post on Strava and confidently say, uh, fitness is back, but it took eight weeks. So there you go. Okay, let's dive in. After the Olympic trials this past weekend in Atlanta, Georgia, I've been, uh, it's been, it's actually been on my, on my mind for a long time, basically since the New York City Marathon, to take a look at my own running form, okay? I've actually never really like hired a professional. I don't know who that would even be, but somebody who maybe has some more experience than I do. But I, but before we analyze my form, I just want to point out once again, uh, just to drive home a key point here. Remember this gentleman from the 2019 Boulder Boulder. Oh, sorry. Can I just get the, there we go, perfect. When I published that blog about nine months ago, a lot of people were commenting and noticing like, wait a minute, he's got a really unique form. Well, guess what? That same gentleman who ended up winning the Boulder Boulder was also in Atlanta.
And so I bring up the example of his stride just to drive home the point. No matter how unique or maybe different your stride is, uh, you can still make it fast and make it work for you. Sure, there might be a few things to tweak, like today's vlog, that's what we're going through. We're going to analyze my stride a little bit. And the goal, of course, is to hopefully race faster. But I just want to make that clear from the outset. Like, I try not to let too much outside noise influence my natural stride that I've been using my entire life. Sure, after years and years of running and watching other strides, like there are a few things that I'd like to work on personally. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to drive that home point, that point home. Now, before we dive into my running form, a couple points. Uh, a tip of the day actually is to get to the bottom of your true running stride, running form. I would argue that it's hard to accomplish that on a treadmill, especially in a running shoe store when you're on fresh legs, okay? Or setting up a phone in a park and then running toward that phone and then going back and reviewing it. Sure, it could give you a little bit of an idea, but at the end of the day, this is why I'm making this point is you're consciously thinking about your running form and running stride when you're filming yourself or maybe at the, at the running shoe store, like you're thinking about what you're doing. Whereas I'm gonna make the argument like the best way to get to the bottom of your stride is to have someone film you in the middle of a race or in the middle of a long run. When you're not thinking about it, you're starting to get a little tired but not too tired and you're just running and you're just doing what you normally naturally do. I know for me, when I'm on a treadmill, or which is rare, or when I'm uh, setting up the camera even for the vlog in a park, Sometimes I'll be on it, like I think about the camera and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna run a maybe a little more smooth right now. Whereas like today, 23 miles in the middle of the run, I was starting to get a little tired and I could feel my form just slipping a little bit. And uh, that is the moment when you wanna pull out the camera. So anyway, just wanna make that point, like make sure if you're gonna analyze your running form that um, if you're able to get a friend or a buddy or a family or a coach to film you when you're not even, when you don't even know it's happening that would be the best moment like they're driving alongside you in a car and you just pull out the iPhone and kind of secretly film the runner for 30 seconds that is the ideal moment okay so here we go three maybe issues or concerns that I have when I look at my running form one of them is been in a, a long time problem that I'm working on right now and it's with see if you actually I'm gonna play the clip right now can anyone pick it out as I'm running toward the camera these are clips from the New York City Marathon can you see something that's just a little off and I can I, I've been watching my running form for a long time so I can pick it out pretty easily but I'll just let you know okay it's my right arm my right arm swings lower than my left arm I have no idea why that happens but it happens and it's something that I'm working on right now uh, I don't know why it's maybe it's the long time mountain running my I am a right arm dominant uh, maybe that has something to do with it but what I'm doing to help uh, fix this I issue instead of letting my arms swing so low which I think is also a again a result of mountain running because you're just digging and di it's just a different like you're digging more in mountain running instead in marathon running I want to be a little more compact, okay? Keeping those arms just a little a little closer to the body. And basically what I'm out, I did it today on my on my long run, is I actually have my fists, um, and I don't not squeezing them, but I have my fists just kind of barely tap my pecs. Okay, so just doot, 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 just to make sure this arm is not drifting too far down and it's just coming up and going boop. Boop, boop, just a little, just getting up there. Again, just I have based on what I've researched and what I've read and what I've watched, is just having a nice, nice, just like right close to the body, not crazy arm swing. And again, this is for road racing in the marathon, not crazy arm swing, just nice and efficient, kind of just nice right up by the body. So I'm trying in my long runs and middle distance runs to just touch my pecs with my arms just a little bit, just to remind myself, keep those arms up. Okay, issue number two, here we go. The head wobble, okay? And I noticed it in this clip in New York City when I was starting to get tired around mile like 21, 22, maybe 23 actually, uh, my head starts to wobble. And this happens to a lot of runners, but it's something to just keep in mind 
You don't want that head to be wobbling. And so you can see my head wobbling in this clip where this, this guy, I never, I actually don't remember this gentleman's name, but he came up running behind me in New York City with a GoPro. Thank you. You know who you are. I wish I could shake your hand because you got a great clip. And here it is, my head is starting to just drift around just a little bit. And again, I'm starting to get tired. This is an uphill section, uh, but that's no excuse. I need to make sure I keep my heads nice and straight and nice, looking straight forward up the road. So, because when I, once you start to wobble and your, your eyes start to drift around, that's when I have found I start to slow down in races. No good, I don't want that. And the last issue that I'm seeing in my running form is my hip strength. I'm noticing that my hips start to drift back and my glutes start to drift back uh, so they're not underneath me, not underneath my torso, but they start to go backward and I start to break down where I'm almost leaning almost too, too far forward. And I don't know, here's a couple clips that maybe show that it's, a, it's really hard to notice. But again, this gets back to hip flexor strength and this is why I'm going to the gym and working on these box jumps so much just to work on that hip flexor strength to help keep those hips and those glutes underneath my torso so I'm really supporting my, my torso and my body when I'm getting tired late in the race once again. So that's the last issue that's really jumping out at me is keeping those hips more forward when I'm getting tired. Now we cannot have this discussion about running faster and running form without talking about stride length and cadence or steps per minute, okay? Actually on today's long run, I think I hit like the average was 181 steps per minute. That's pretty typical for me, I'm, pr I'm pleased with that. Uh, and so there's a little bit of a debate uh, in the running world whether which one is more important, stride length versus cadence. And I'm gonna say uh, that both are important, but I would lean more in the direction of steps per minute or cadence is more important than your stride length. Um, I do think, actually in Atlanta, I saw some runners, I was analyzing their form, it, it looked like they were overstriding just a little bit. And, and I saw it especially later in the race when the pack broke up and runners were trying to chase down the pack. I could tell that they were trying to overstride to help uh, make up time. And I lean more in the direction, I think overstriding can actually, uh, long term, I think it, it can actually really uh, make your quads more tired. So I lean more in the direction of quick steps, cadence, that's why I do the fast feet exercises in the gym, and I'm more, that's, that's, my, that's my mantra, and that's, that's where I, the direction I lean into. And one of the reasons I lean in that direction most likely is probably because I'm five foot six, and so it's like, my legs only have so much to give. And so I try to focus like, even if, I just think that trying to lengthen your stride an inch or two, yes, that's good, uh, but at the end of the day, like, I'm not gonna get too much more out of my legs. Um, so anyway, I focus more on quick feet and turnover and efficiency in that regards, that running economy that you hear about. So uh, there you go, okay? That's my breakdown of my running form, some things to work on for me in marathon training leading into my third marathon. I'll be curious to read some comments. If you uh, are seeing something, uh, this is not the question of the day, but if you are seeing something in my stride that I could be working on, I'm all ears, feel free to comment down below. I'd appreciate it. And yes, <coughs> excuse me. I'm dying out here. That question of the day, whew, after listening to today's vlog, is there a component of your running stride or running form that you would like to work on in 2020 or that you have been working on in the last, let's say, six months, okay? And let us know your results if you are improving in a, in a particular area, okay? I cannot wait, I love this topic. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching. I gotta call it because I have some stomach issues and I'm gonna make it through. But uh, oh, I love you all. You're the best, onward and upward. Oh, keep fighting, just keep fighting. Oh my goodness, we will get better together. We will get better together. Okay, I love you all. Right. <clears throat> In case you did not see the Atlanta vlog from the Olympic trials, you could check it out right up here. It's a doozy and you can analyze and see some running form in slow motion from the men and the women. Just some great, uh, amazing running strides. All right, there you go. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.